Hello and uh, welcome back. Uh, today I have a frequency counter. I uh, found it on eBay. Um, it's a Dynatech and it's the DFC 1000, but it's also known as the Hung Chang 9100 or the Long Y TFC 1000 or the Dynatech DFC 1000. Well, it comes in many uh, <laughs> shapes and sizes. Well, actually, they are all the same size. I will show you some uh, pictures later. And uh, what I like to do with this is uh, to check if it's okay and go to the calibration uh, procedure. Uh, and of course, as always, I start with the cleaning. Yes, here we have the Long Y TFC uh, 1000. It also comes as the Hung Chang 9100 and it comes as a HCLF1000 not sure what the brand is and it comes as a Maplin MF1000 and as you can see the the housing looks uh, very similar of course we talk about uh, the bottom one well, it also comes as an uh, elenco uh, model f1000 and um, i found a service manual uh, for that so uh, let's go through this manual for the calibration elenco was so uh, kind to put the schematic diagrams with it um, that's very nice they are a bit more fussy about the calibration but luckily uh, I found another brand that did have the proper calibration sheets well, as you could probably uh, have seen that was the instruction manual and here I have one the MF1000 it's from uh, Maplin and this one actually does have the to uh, put the calibration uh, section also here so uh, we will just uh, follow that okay yeah the, um, this one uh, had an arm like this so what i did uh, you with a little screwdriver you uh, take out these uh, little caps behind the, the cover you find a, a screw you take out on both sides then you have four screws on the back and uh, then you can just uh, open it it is a little bit stuck but then it will go to the top and it will just go out there it is and then you have the counter and now you have easy access it's nicely closed also uh, RF wise well more or less then here also and they drilled holes for the calibration which is nice uh, probably I will take off the cover because uh, I have these ceramic screwdrivers but they are not this long and yeah so. uh, before you start calibrating you need to have it switched on for at least uh, 20 30 minutes uh, that's what's in the manual because it has a little uh, oven here you have the, the oscillator it is not this uh, very special oscillator but they made some sort of uh, heat uh, yeah just keeps its own temperature and as you can see i just switched it on on the input i have a perfect uh, 10 megahertz or near uh, perfect and uh, well it is still uh, getting stabilized so we're just gonna leave it here for uh, 20 minutes it has been switched on now for uh, at least 20 minutes um, so um, I, I, I can feel also that uh, the oscillator is a little bit hot so that is uh, good then it's it's warm and it keeps its own temperature so uh, there are uh, different ways of doing the calibration and the first thing uh, we, we're going to do um, is what you can do on any counter just feed in the 10 megahertz from your 
lab reference in in my case this is the gpsdo that i show in my other uh, video um, and that that is good that's the first method method one and then we're going to use the other methods just to check if we did it correctly uh, i think you can see okay now we just uh, start adjusting well i i <laughs> would say it is uh, already pretty good Yeah, this uh, frequency counter actually uses uh, two oscillators, one for the lower setting and one for the for the gigahertz uh, setting. The lower setting, I cannot get any better than what it is right now. It's 80 hertz off, which is not a lot, um, but uh, I would like to see it better. So maybe I can make a little modification or just uh, replace the crystal. Um, what we can do is now switch to the b-channel it has a different trimmer it's, you see here two holes the first one is for the 10 and the second one is for the higher frequency um, so what I will do I switch to the b-channel I switch here to the b-channel and then you see the this one is almost good but what they say that you should feed in a gigahertz signal and I will do that um, that will come from the Marconi but the Marconi is also linked to the GPSDO so that should also be a very good signal so we're gonna do that as you can see in the 10 megahertz it's yeah this is the best resolution I can get in this uh, port but it says 10 0 0 0 yeah now it says 1 and now it says 0 so we need to really check on the higher frequency okay I don't know how I did this but somehow with this uh, trimmer <laughs> I got it exactly on one gigahertz so uh, look at this just feeding it in from the Marconi and here I have it it is spot 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 on yeah it makes me happy all those zeros <laughs> Then there is uh, method number two and that is if you are lucky enough to uh, have a frequency counter with uh, a, a 10 megahertz out or oscillator out you can also try to measure this oscillator frequency with another frequency counter that is better or that is connected to a GPSDO or another lab reference and then you can compare those frequencies that's also possible so if I do that here in this case because I didn't do the modification yet we should see that it's more or less 80 edge off so I'm gonna connect that and then I come back to you I connected here the output of the frequency counter to the input of my other frequency counter the TTI the TTI is uh, yeah, more professional so it does have an external reference input and I connected it to the GPSDO so it's comparing and you see also it is about uh, 80 Hertz 82 actually 80 Hertz of uh, difference uh, so that's the second method then you also have a third method that is connecting it to the oscilloscope and that's also what we're gonna do and uh, what you do with the scope method is that you feed uh, in one channel of the scope you feed your uh, perfect 10 megahertz or your lab reference near perfect and the output of the of the frequency counter if you have one if you don't you use method one and then if you look at the screen there should be no movement between the between the perfect 10 megahertz and your frequency counter and that is maybe easier because then you don't need to look at the display you can just put your screwdriver and you can see the waves uh, move I freeze it right now because I know we are a little bit off with this one in the lower frequency range uh, but then you should see uh, this so, methods three <laughs> so in here you can see the difference between the output of the 
GPSDO in the output of the frequency counter and it should not move as it is doing right now it's not moving so that means both are perfect um, yeah and that could be easier especially if you are on the longer gate times like 10 seconds then you'll really need to wait a long time for uh, yeah to see the difference of the, the changes you make with the trimmer so uh, some prefer these methods but uh, a lot of the frequency counters uh, especially the cheaper ones don't uh, have an output for the 10 MHz so then you just use method 1 as I did uh, in the start that's it our frequency counter is clean it's uh, perfectly adjusted it's 10 <laughs> as we want it to be uh, yeah if you like my video uh, please put a thumbs up because that will help me uh, will help me uh, get into the list and if you uh, really want to be updated every time I post a new uh, video and that's not that much I put a few videos a week so uh, then uh, please subscribe and uh, thank you for watching have fun